Hey guys, Alex here. This video you're about to watch, I filmed uh, last winter. Uh, so like winter 2014 into 15. Um, it's a motorcycle I worked on for a buddy of mine from high school. And uh, yeah, it's kind of been uh, on the back burner, you know, me making videos. Uh, anyway, watch this video. At the end of it, I'll tell you all about what's been happening recently. Uh, if you don't want to watch that, if you just want to watch the, uh, the bike rebuild video, you know, go ahead and just turn it off when I'm done. All right, but at the end of this video, I'll explain why you've been waiting so long. Hey guys, Alex Man here in the garage, and behind me is a uh, Honda XR70 or CRF70. I haven't even really looked at it that much. Uh, let's take a look at this thing. It is an XR70, which I could not remember because I just pushed this thing into my shed. Um, didn't really take a look at it because it was way too cold. It's a 2002. I think they uh, stopped making the XRs and started calling them CRFs in like 2004 or five or something. It's the same basic bike besides the plastics. And I uh, used that same Honda engine that they've been making, the same platform they've been using since like 67. Some of you YouTubers may not know this about me. I pretty much got my start um, working on anything, like with my hands at all, when I was 12 with a 1980 Honda Z50R. And it's what got me started in videos making how-to's. It's really kind of what built my YouTube empire. Not really, but you know, it's, it's what pretty much got me started with everything. I really like them. Uh, I've, you know, <laughs> made tons of videos from them and, uh, you know, I've been playing with these things for years. I probably rebuilt maybe, 50, you know, I've probably done 50 to uh, somewhere between 50 and 100 Honda 50 rebuilds. <laughs> um, quite a few, so, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to call myself an expert, but I've, you know, I, I really do know my way around and uh, all the little tips and tricks and uh, things people forget, and I can do them pretty quick. So I'm not trying to brag or anything. I just, you know, I, I really love these things. Anyway, a buddy of mine from high school uh, got a hold of me. He got this thing because it was locked up or something. He put a new cam chain in it, but uh, now it's got no compression um, because the cam chain was all balled up around the crank. So I don't know. He says it's got no compression. He doesn't know if it's timed right. I haven't really done much more than kick it over and say, yeah, it's got no compression. So may have bent valves, may just be timed wrong. So let's take this thing apart and have a look at it. Hope you guys like this because I know that some of you complain I don't do any Honda 50 videos anymore. I still got that 80, an 84 Z50R. It's all built up, 108 cc. It's pretty quick. Street legal too now. Carbs already off of it, so and so is the foot peg. So I think what I'm going to do, since it's pretty easy, is I'm going to actually pull this motor out of the bike. There's only the electronics, two bolts, the chain, and the exhaust at this point. So I'm just going to pull it out of the bike. That way we can do this on the workbench. It's pretty obvious this bike has been worked on. Um, apparently the guy that did this uh, has never messed with a four-stroke before. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Before we go any further, I'll show you how much compression this thing has. Pretty much none. So. Now I get these sprocket bolts off. Let's see here how recently. No, they're loose. That's probably been taken off recently. Let's take that off. Lay it all there. And now there's nothing holding the motor on except for uh, the two motor mount bolts. One back here in front of the swing arm pivot, one right on top. Something else that's interesting that I'll show you here is uh, that breather line for the crankcase vent is disconnected. It's always interesting working on bikes that have been uh, worked on by other people. So we just wiggle the motor to get the, uh, the rear bolt out. Motor. Got a little bit of a mess over here. Got a four-cylinder IFS brake caliper off a of Toyota pickup slash forerunner and 80s Toyota pickup slash forerunner grill waiting to be repaired and painted. So 
all sorts of projects here and then oh some other stuff for Toyotas. I'm just gonna push this all out of the way and clean it all up here. This is trash. Yeah. Heater's nice. It's missing the copper washer, which is supposed to go on this stud here, because this is one that's actually pressurized with oil pressure. The that's supposed to have an acorn nut, the open nut is supposed to go here. Because this stud is actually open to uh, atmosphere because of the way the head is casted. So that's that. Looks like we have the aluminum washer there, which is good. Um, yeah, so uh, we're also leaking oil from around the stator. So I'm guessing that the stator O-rings are either rolled or the one for the big, the big stator plate O-ring is either rolled or they left out one of the little ones that goes on the screws. So we'll find that all out too, I guess. So first things first, let's pull this cover off here, see what we're looking at in terms of timing. And a lot of things no one knows is how to get this thing off. There's actually a bolt that goes all the way through the camshaft. You loosen that off and it uh, loosens that cover up. 10 and 8 is the only thing you really need to get this whole thing apart. The older ones used a 9mm headed bolt on the camshaft plate, or sprocket, I'm sorry. I don't remember what year they stopped doing that. Alrighty, so <clears throat> let's see if this thing is timed correctly. There's two timing marks on the flywheel. There's an F and a T. F is where it's supposed to fire if you're using a timing light. And T is where you should have all your timing marks lined up at. So we're that valve overlap there. There we go. Yeah, it is timed correctly. So next thing we'll look at is uh, valve clearance to see if the valves are just hanging open. If that's not it, then chances are we got a bent valve. So valve clearances on these engines are checked cold. And they're just tappets underneath this cover here. Uh, there's no clearance there. There's some, ooh, there's a heck of a lot of clearance on the exhaust side. Probably got a bent valve. The exhaust valve is more likely to bend, unfortunately. Okay, so we're at, uh, if you see there, the T is lined up with the notch in the crankcase indicating top dead center on the crank and uh, the circle mark is lined up with the notch in the head which indicates top dead center compression uh, because the cam spins half the speed of the crank so you could still be at TDC on the crank and the cam would be you see the mark is now 180 off these engines are wasted spark so there's no such thing as wasted as uh, 180 off you could literally spin these two uh, you could spin the sprocket 180 degrees on the cam, line it up, and it would still run exactly the same. Some people don't quite understand that. It's not important. Basically, do it right and it'll work. Do it wrong, it'll still work. So don't worry about that. Anyway, let's get this back to TDC compression. T mark lined up there, circle lined up with the notch there. And you see there's no valve clearance on that intake valve. But there is heck of a lot on the exhaust. So. so I'm gonna put some more valve clearance in on the uh, on the intake valve just to see if it gives us compression but I'm guessing that it's not going to. Um, so we don't need to set it exactly right now. We need to make sure, to make sure we have some. And we do. still with no compression so set this all back to TDC and looks like we're gonna have to pull this thing apart I'm definitely guessing bent exhaust valve a couple eight millimeter bolts pull the cam sprocket off just pop it off that's off the uh, dowel there there we go 10 millimeter to Loosen up side bolts. And the cam chain roller. Eight millimeter to pull off 
this cover. Oh yeah, exhaust valve is definitely bent. It's obvious just by looking at it. Alrighty, so the intake valve seating nice and flush against the uh, relief in the head there. The exhaust valve um, bent exactly like I thought it would be. Right there, so. New valve and uh, just uh, yeah, new valve lapping into the head and this should be good to go. He also said that he wasn't sure if the rings were put on correctly um, up and down wise so um, I'm gonna pull the jug off here and have a look at that too as long as we're here. Alright so head gasket slides off over in here for the oil return. Cam sprocket can come out and uh, I like to grab the uh, roller with a pair of needle nose, vice grip, or needle nose pliers Bolt out, lay that all together. And at this point, you can just slide the jug right off. Cylinder walls look real nice, no scoring or anything. You can get replacement ones uh, pretty cheap, actually. Alright, so there you can see the middle compression ring. Very, very, very little tension. And, uh,. A gigantic end gap. If I do compress it, yeah, I don't even know how that's possible, to be quite honest with you. Uh, the compression ring looks better, but it's still not good. And all the end gaps are lined up on the oil ring, which also looks damaged. So, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, this gasket here was not trimmed correctly. I was just folded over. Not correct, although I don't think they had the bottom end apart. I don't know if they did. Also something that I'm not seeing is the O-ring for the oil return. Not on the jug, not on the base gasket, or at the bottom gasket, and it's not in the uh, recess there. And it's not anywhere on my workbench. So that was missing. So that'll definitely cause a leak. So, all looks fixable though. Okay, so next thing to do is uh, let's pull this flywheel off, pull the stator plate, and see why it's leaking oil around there. So, 14 millimeter, get the crank nut off, and this is pretty much the easiest way to do it. Done. And here's a special tool for removing the flywheel. Got a left hand thread that threads into the flywheel. Without that special puller, it's very difficult to get the uh, flywheel off. Sometimes you can get away with using big pry bars, but uh, Rise against it, and uh, same thing here with these screws, which are well finger tight. Usually, you need an impact hour to get them off. Um, in this case, it's not necessary. So, with the oil drained out of it, safest places to pry are the boss for uh, the pickup. very, very, very carefully on the actual coils. And, as I suspected, O-ring missing from the bottom of the stator plate, so that's why that's leaking. The big one looks pretty good, so we'll probably reuse that. And uh, then this thing will be all set, I suppose. You can see the O-ring there at the top of the for the top screw. 
Uh, oops. Save that. But there was none for the bottom screw. There's supposed to be one for each of these screw holes. And uh, one big one that goes all the way around. Um, the bottom one was missing, so that's the source of that oil leak. Um, just as I suspected. Plus this thing was just put together dirty. You can see all this grit and stuff behind the, uh, the seal. So, you know, it just wasn't, uh, wasn't reassembled correctly and it's a shame, but, uh, nothing that isn't fixable. Nothing that isn't fixable at all. All we need is a gasket kit, new rings, um, and, uh, a new exhaust valve and then we'll be all set. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, keep your eye out for part two and three. I haven't really finished editing them yet, so they'll be coming out as I finish them. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about what's been going on with me. So, uh, got myself a new job I'm in a new town, graduated college, and uh, so now I'm I'm here and I'm working, and I've been I've just been busy as hell, uh, moving in, getting everything situated. It's uh, it's a real hassle, uh, new job and everything. So, um, but I got my own place, moved out, living on my own now, and uh, really enjoying it so far. So let's I'll give you a little bit of a tour here. Well, if you don't know me, I needed a garage. That was uh, my number one requirement was a house with a garage, so I got this uh, little car and a half, maybe two car garage here. It's detached from the house, but uh, lots of room to work in here. And uh, I already got some projects going. Um, and uh, still got some stuff to unpack, Like, but really it's only that box and a couple over there behind the mini bike. So. Um, yeah, I'm liking it here. I already got uh, some projects going, kind of going through my lawnmower. I got two lawnmowers, so this is my, my nicer one, and so I'm going through it to make sure it's ready to go, and it's that old lawn boy that I've had for a while. There's the carb and everything off of it. Uh, Z50 under that blanket there. There's the lawn boy, and uh, there's some scrap steel and parts for my off-road lawnmower there. Got myself a new compressor there, but I got to run a 20 amp circuit into this garage. All the lights and outlets in here run off one 15 amp circuit, and that trips it. So, gonna run some power into here. Um, still uh, planning to do the SAS. Been painting parts and cleaning stuff up slowly as I have time, but that's a pretty big money project. Uh, and uh, you know, I gotta have something else to drive, so it's kind of on the back burner. Um, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's for the Forerunner there. Um, took her back to stock height, so no more ball joint spacers, no more 31 inch tires. Um, basically just keeping it stock till I sass it. So let's look under the hood. Still got a 22 RE under here. So, the last video on this truck, I was diagnosing it and I showed you that, uh, basically I cracked one, the the rings on cylinder number two and you avid viewers may have caught a block over there that's the uh, that's the block that came out of this truck so the engine that's in here now this is a Craigslist engine I got for 700 bucks out of a 93 automatic Toyota pickup um, so basically just took the block in the head and swapped over my uh, intake and exhaust because that stuff is slightly different and uh, this thing's been running fine ever since. Got 100, it had 145,000 miles on it when I put it in. And that was about uh, 10,000 miles ago. It's been running great. Absolutely great. Um, it's quieter than that other engine ever was. And uh, I'm real happy with it. So, unfortunately, when your one and only vehicle is down, you're in sort of a time crunch. You don't have time to make videos. And I didn't get any videos of swapping that motor in. Um, what happened was, uh, I believe that was a Labor Day weekend, wasn't it? Um, but I did that. I bought the motor. Sunday they delivered it, and I put all new gaskets in it. I didn't have an engine hoist. Monday morning, I bought an engine hoist, took the old motor out of here, put the new motor in, bolted everything back up, and drove it back to school uh, that day. I literally put the engine in, put everything back together, Backed it in, started it up, backed it into the driveway to bleed the coolant and check fluids and everything. I shut it off, I packed it up, and I drove four hours to school. There's no test drive or anything, and it's been running fine ever since. So, kind of ballsy, but 
it worked out. So that's the Forerunner there. She's been running great. Air conditioning, everything works. This thing is a nice truck. Uh, keep an eye out for a video soon about how to move the driver's seat back. I didn't actually move it back, I just extended the travel so that uh, taller people can fit in there. I'm 6'3", so uh, if anyone else has the same seats, uh, this mod is super duper easy and it works perfect. I mean, super awesome. So keep an eye out for that. But I'm real happy with the garage here. I boarded up that door because it's pretty cheap and flimsy. But uh, real happy with the garage. Got uh, tons of storage space if I need it up there. Um, right now I just got a couple bicycles hanging. Uh, I got some tires hanging up or kind of propped up there in the rafters. Uh, those are for sale. I don't really want them anymore. And, but lots of storage space. Uh, I bought a couple light fixtures here that are really bright and really lights up the whole garage. Uh, I'm probably going to buy one for there. On that side I'm probably going to hang one right above there, kind of pointing under the hood. That way when I'm working under the hood i got plenty of light. Um, so, but uh, yeah, real happy. Let's have a look at the house here. So there's the driveway. It's just uh, you know, a little stone drive, you know, I don't know what that is. It isn't stone, it is paved. But you know, just got the two strips, whatever that's called. Got some wood there to burn. It's just a little two bedroom house, one story. And uh, I'm just renting it right now. So, you know, it's kind of nice. I don't have to deal with maintenance or anything. Just kind of got to let them know. But uh, I got myself a little backyard here. And uh, on the back side of the garage is where I actually got the two off-road lawnmowers. So here we are inside the house. Laundry area over here. Uh, kind of next to the kitchen. There's the refrigerator. Kitchen's here. Uh, you know, not too big, but, you know, perfectly adequate for me. Got my little kitty cat over there eating. Breakfast area. Well, dining room table. Microwave. And uh, we got two bedrooms. So over there is my bedroom slash office and over here it's pretty much uh, pretty much just storage at this point so kind of got some some stuff and got a big old 33 inch BFG all terrain yep 331050 pizza cutters on my new rims so those will be going on the forerunner hopefully soon also in the second bedroom is uh, access to the attic where even more storage space than this. And here's my family room. i still got to unpack my duffel bag from this weekend, but TV, table, a couple couches. So, yep, it's a pretty nice place. I'm pretty happy with it.